Hello and welcome to the Work for Change podcast. My name is Sam, spelled like Sam. My name is Shrissa with a C. And this is episode 36. It's going to be the best episode yet. So the girls decided <laughs> that... <laughs> They you guys did a great job. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> the girls decided that they wanted to have a podcast takeover. Mm-hmm. Um, and but we so said you can't take it over all the way, so we're going to still be here and watch. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to just watch this train. <laughs> Sl- slowly <laughs> derail. Yeah. You said we couldn't take it over, so we compromised and we're taking it over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, no, okay, so the reason why we're all able to do this is it is July 4th weekend. Um, today is actually July 5th that we were recording and we all had Friday off work. So, yay. Um, yeah, I know. Yay. Celebrating. Mm-hmm. Woo. Um, so we all had the day off and we're like, you know, it'd be awesome. Let's get a podcast together. Yeah, and that's how this happened. And then the girls were like, oh, we want to take over. Blah, blah. And we're like, okay, fine. I guess that's what you guys are going to do. And then that's how this, that we Because we're are. basically picking on how they do their intro. So Sam <laughs> yeah. and I did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not just picking on how we did the intro. They're picking on everything we do. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly, it's actually all three of us are picking on everything. Jen, yeah. Jen <laughs> For real, though. <laughs> Yeah. I don't like today. <laughs> I don't like this day at all. <laughs> Why? That was, that was sad. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Because you guys are jerks. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> They're making fun of my habits that I have, which we won't get into because then everyone else will be making fun of my habits, which I don't want to talk about. So, you know, but if you guys are watching on YouTube, you'll notice that we're in a different place. Um, so this is actually a, a new house that we're in. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. So um, me and my brother, John, with a silent H, um, <laughs> our friend Caleb, which has been on my YouTube channel. Has he been on your YouTube channel? I don't think so. Yeah. He's been on my YouTube channel. Um, we all moved into a place. Mm-hmm. Um, and in three months, when Sam and I get married. Exactly three months to this day. Wow. Ooh, yeah, yes. Exciting. Um, she will be moving in too, but she is a large <laughs> presence in this house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> partly because she's helping us with rent. Yeah. Um, so therefore, she is monetarily. And all things have to go through me. That's yeah. my <laughs> new rule. So mon- <laughs> monetarily, she is a large part of the house, but then also um, she is one like. Three months is such a short amount of time in the long scheme of things. And so in three months, she'll be living here. And then um, if she didn't get to make any of the style choices, just the cleaning, the arranging, any of that stuff. First of all, you would blow up. Second of all, it would literally look like a college norm. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be sitting on the floor right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, (laughs) also this, you know, so she will be moving in, but, you know, we're doing the they all wait till you're married to live with each other thing. We're old fashioned. Old fashioned. <laughs> so that is why. Um, but I had to move out of the place I was. We all had to move out. We actually yeah. all had to move out at the same exact time. Pretty much. Yeah. Like the and same exact day. Basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then it all worked out that we all moved into this place just a little bit before our wedding, which is actually kind of nice because now we're like, we have three months to make this home before it's home. I can slowly move in all my clothes. <laughs> it's gonna take no. three months. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can slowly move in a portion of clothes that you currently still wear, and not everything that you've owned since middle school, which <laughs> she hey, has. I still fit in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't grown. I go through clothes so fast. I think because part of it's because I get, luckily, I get stuff sent to me a lot. You know, so I just. I'll wear stuff and then <laughs> and I end up just giving it to Jean. <laughs> so and then he gets my clothes. I think we talked about this last time. Um, like, yeah, we did. We, we talked about it not the last time, but the time before about how like I really enjoy my individuality. Yeah. And so anytime you copy me, it would like make me really upset. Um, but now that we do kind of have similar styles and stuff, and then when I start having a style, you uh, have not fake news. You <laughs> you take it over. Liar. But it's totally fine because I just know that in three months it'll be my style again anyway. <laughs> like the shirt uh, you're wearing. Like the shirt I'm wearing is yep. previously yours. Yep. And then everything I wore today at the gym was previously yours. It's true. And everything you wore yesterday. <laughs> it's a, well, it works for me. And well, it works for me too because I'm I'm I don't know I'm like I think i'm a pretty giving person so it makes me happy like i'm i'm always really happy when i'm able able to give something to someone and they use it for the intended purpose right so like a lot of my stuff is like workout gear and i don't mind giving it to goodwill and i've done that literally like probably 10 times in the past but it always makes me happy when i know it's going to someone one that i care about you know my brother but two that they're going to use this workout shirt to work out in or these shoes that are you know crossfit shoes to do crossfit in instead of just like wearing them to walk around which is fine if you need shoes but 
I'd like them to be used for the intended purpose. So have you ever makes seen me happy. someone walking around who does not do CrossFit or work out? Dude, I have a story. They, and they like I have a story. So do I. Um, okay. And they are wearing like Metcons. Like Nanos are fine because they're a little more comfortable. But like, especially like Metcons. Like they're so sturdy. There's someone I know. I don't ve- know. Very near and dear, um, who mm-hmm. was wearing Metcons one day, and it's my pastor. <laughs> yes, my pastor Brandon. Oh, um, I was like, who is it? Who yeah, is yeah, yeah. No, and so he was like, uh, he showed up to the office one day, and he was wearing Metcons. He had no idea what they were. Huh? No, no. Yeah. I'm like, hey, dude, we're in Metcons. He's like. Yeah, yeah, I found them at the clearance. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> found them in the clearance aisle. They were, like, Metcon 2s. Yeah. Um, and I just, like, was thinking, like, of all the shoes in the clearance, you chose Metcons. Like, the sturdiest, most rigid. Like, they're not, like, your typical workout shoes. They're kind of soft, kind of like some cushion, kind of bend. It's like, you chose bricks. Yeah, well, I don't know. They they look good. And mm-hmm. think about it. We like wearing Vans, and Vans are not comfortable. You're wearing Vans right now. Yeah. Vans aren't comfortable. Like, the old Vans. They're comfortable-ish, but they're, like, compared to the new, those new Vans. Yeah, I guess. So, and they don't look bad. Like, I could see someone choosing a pair of Metcons over a pair of Nanos. Nanos, the new ones, I actually like how they look, but, like, all the ones before, I never thought they looked, like, good. Mm-hmm. Like, I would never wear them outside of CrossFit gym. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, well, that is funny. What was your oh, so my story was, I was, one time, I was checking out at Vons, and I looked down, and this guy was wearing, he was wearing lifters. Oh. He was wearing Olympic weightlifting <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and he was wearing jeans. Like, it, he, it wasn't someone that was, like, working out. And, you know, I, I don't know. This, maybe I feel a little bit bad because it, I, the person probably, they might have been homeless. I'm not 100% sure. So maybe that was the only shoes they had. But I'm like, that's unbelievable. Like, that yeah. cannot be comfortable mm-hmm. at all. Lifters, <clears throat> Adidas, they were... Uh, Addy Powers. Yeah, and I looked down and I was just like, "No." <laughs> Unless he needs so a squat was, or something. I don't know. Yeah, you never well, know. Putting them boxes. <laughs> yeah. moving around. Did well, he work at Vons? No, no, no. no he, mm. Ladies, yeah, are yeah. lifters more comfortable than high heels? Um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shrissa was not talking to the microphone. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if it's somebody who literally has no clue and is removed from the workout world that has no idea what shoes are what and they just go and they're looking for an expensive pair of shoes, I would choose Cons. Yeah. And I honestly don't mind walking around them. I'm not going to walk around an entire Disneyland all day in Metcons. But. Yeah. Well, they're also Nikes too and Nikes always look good. Exactly. Yeah. And they're like I've always the said like they, Metcons, there has, they have to sell way more Metcons than they do Nanos. Because, like, you almost never see someone wearing nanos unless they do CrossFit. Yeah. You see people in Metcons, like, say you go to Crunch or 24-Hour Fitness, like, that's a pretty popular shoe to wear. And, they're, I mean, they're good for anything. So, so are nanos, but nobody's nobody thinks Reebok unless they're a CrossFitter for or, workout, like, gear. I mean, I think, yeah, maybe. I think fighters might do it, too, well, yeah. like, mm, boxing yeah. and stuff like that. If you're in like a certain that. sport. Yeah. I think if you but were they to... they literally say CrossFit on them. And if you don't do yeah. CrossFit, you're not going to want to wear shoes that say CrossFit on them. That's mm-hmm. why I think they should get rid of the CrossFit branding, personally. But. Yeah. I think the way that Nanos look, though, if I were to go to, say, like, Roadrunner Sports and be looking for shoes, I would not see a Nano and be like, oh, those are cool looking. I want to buy them. I honestly think they're kind of ugly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're comfortable. What do you think about the new nanos, the nano nines? I think the that ones they, that I've been wearing. Recently. They look, oh, yeah. they look way better than the nano eights, and they look way better than nano sevens. I was already turned off a nano eight because I owned nano yeah, sevens, and terrible. they were the worst shoes in the world. Like those they were so bad, they hurt my shins so bad. Mm-hmm. And so when they created the nano eight, I know it was a completely different shoe, but it looked just like the seven. Mm-hmm. That I was just like, mm. well, I remember the marketing they did. Like they literally had. All of the athletes had to say, I, I'm, I'm sure there was something they had to sign or something that said, like, they're way, they're the best nanos yet. You have to try them on because everyone would see them and they, they look almost exactly the same. Yeah. And so you just assume, well, those are going to be bricks on my feet, just yeah. like the Nano 7s were, but they're not. I mean, they're, they're some of the best CrossFit shoes I think that have ever been released. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, nano, I don't know why they did that. I haven't tried on the Nano 9s yet, though. You haven't? Nope. Mm-mm. Yeah, I like them. I like to try them. Running in my nanos yesterday for the workout, I got a blister, so they're not that fun. Oh, that's funny because every time I wear my nanos, I make sure I wear them for a running workout because I love them. Yeah, everyone's different. It's, yeah. fu- it's mm-hmm. funny how, how that works. Okay, so I wanted to ask you guys a question because you two recently did something 
that was a pretty big deal. You yes. guys did a CrossFit competition. Yeah. So let's hear about that. That was it was your first CrossFit competition, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So tell me about it. One of my goals for 2019 was to do a CrossFit competition. Yes. And I did one. There was a local competition that I wanted to do and I needed a partner. So I asked Sam yes. to do it with me. Well, this and you asked a few people, mm-hmm. right? And there a few people said one yes. Person. Oh, okay. And then they ended up having to back out for, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. And so you were like kind of stressed out about that. And so the very last person that you would have wanted to ask <laughs> was very, Sam. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I said, yes. yes. <laughs> no, my friend Mary from Faith RX, I asked her. Oh, okay. And because of her injury of her foot, she couldn't. And I was nervous anyway because she's a, an advanced athlete. Mm-hmm. And I can do the advanced movements, but I was like, oh my gosh, to do my first competition in advance, that stresses me out. Yes. And I really wanted to have fun and just put in effort. And so my second choice was, I was like, Sam would have fun. I'm going to ask her. So yes. cool little side story. Mary is actually married to a guy named Josh Everett, who was third place at, I think, the 2008 games or one of the early, early games. So they're both just like absolute beasts. And we get to work out with them every once in a while, which is cool. But Mary, I remember she was like trying to get Sharissa to do advanced and Sharissa really didn't want to. The The thing that was cool about this competition was advanced and intermediate wasn't that different. Mm-hmm. Advanced just had like bar muscle ups instead of chest of bars. The weight was a little bit different on some of the workouts and then there was an extra workout. Mm-hmm. The advanced did a whole other workout that was, it was a swim workout, right? But as far as like most of the workouts, they were very similar. So Sharissa could have done it, but I was, I, I didn't really, because I wanted you to have the most fun possible. And a good first experience. A good too. first experience. Like me and my brother, when we did our first competition, we did, uh, we honestly probably went a little under our skill level than we should have, but we didn't know, right? We went beginner because we had just started CrossFit. We'd been doing CrossFit for a couple months yeah. when we did our competition. I think, but we, I think had, we did fine. Yeah, we had a great time. We had soup, like a lot of fun. First place. But like, yeah, we got first place, right? <laughs> um, but if we would have done something that would have been above our skill level, I just felt like I would have been stressed out and been like worried the whole time. And so I didn't want that to happen to Sharissa. So when she was like, should I do advanced? Should I do intermediate? I was like, kind of always saying, I think you should do intermediate. Like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's saying, Oh, I'm not pushing myself. It's like, I want to have a good experience and like actually enjoy the day. So I was glad that you, you went intermediate with Sam. Mm -hmm. Well, even like if you go to a CrossFit gym and you walk in and you see the workout, you're like, Oh, there's RX, RX plus like, Oh, all the stuff and the advance for our competition we could have done. But when it's in it, like a competition, it's so different. Yeah. Like in a competition, you want to feel like you own the movement. It's not, you can do them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like Mm -hmm. one of my goals is to always, like I've always wanted to do an advanced but I'm just not there yet. Like I can do a lot of the movements, but like today we did ring muscle ups in the workout and I was doing sets of one and two. If I wanted to do it advanced and feel like I could actually pl- not place, but like do well and not get like last, I'd want to be able to bust out five every time, no matter what. Right. So, but yeah, sorry. I interrupted your, the story. I was excited about this competition too, because our faith RX chapter, they were tabling at the event. So they were asking if there's anybody that would want to compete. So we got to compete with yeah. faith RX, you know, tanks on, and it was for the Police Cares Foundation. I think that's what it was called. So yeah. it was like um, for a good cause competition. Yeah, it was really cool. Mm. What is Faith RX? Faith RX is a faith and fitness community. So our chapter meets every other week and it's a CrossFit workout first. And all the workouts are completely scalable for anybody who wants to attend. And then there's a Bible study after. And so also all faith levels are welcome. Yeah. And so it's an awesome community. That was one of the communities I found when I moved to San Diego. That was really helpful for me feeling like I had a place of people that I could, you know, get involved with because I moved out here by myself. And so that was one of my saving graces for sure. Yeah. And it was right around the time that I found, you know, faith and CrossFit. So it all worked out really Two well. Two things that mesh together very well. Yes. Yeah. I, I always feel like when people move into a city, like if you can find a church and find a gym, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those are like strong crucial communities communities yeah because when you're by yourself it just sucks Mm -hmm. you know like even if you're an introvert if you're by yourself too long it sucks um and so when you can find two communities and when you can find a community that that seamlessly blends the two it's like oh and believes Mm -hmm. what you believe Mm -hmm. yeah exactly both ways Mm -hmm. yeah i think just with any like I think any community that you can find that yeah. you feel a part of is important. If you really like Dungeons and Dragons and you move to a city and you 
maybe try and find a Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. Like, yeah. I think because you know there are some people that maybe don't go to church. There are some people that maybe don't want to want to work out with people. You know, not everyone likes to do CrossFit, right? So, I think that just finding a community, especially like if you're somewhere where where you're new, right? That is human beings. We crave community. Being even social. if you're, I, I think even if you are, like you said, an introvert. There gets to a point where it's like I want to be at least around people. I think part. Of, so I'm definitely like a mixture of introvert and extrovert. I Sharissa knows this. Like I very much so enjoy my time with other people, but there is a point where I'm like I need to get home, right? But if I'm at home all day long, or even at the office and I'm editing all day long by myself, it's I I get into my head too much. So like I'll even sometimes I'll be at the office editing and I'll leave and just go to a coffee shop so I'm around other people, um, so I can be like around other humans and feel like I'm not just completely alone but like community is such an important thing and I think it's overlooked as far as like when it comes to like overall health like that helps your overall health so much Mm -hmm. being around like-minded people and I think that's one of the things I love so much about you know our church and Faith Rx and our gym is that it's such an easy community to become a part of because people want to accept you yeah and everyone's so welcoming Mm -hmm. exactly oh for sure that's what I loved about CrossFit so much and what got me addicted and hooked was the community and everyone just looking forward to seeing each other and everyone's so nice like you're here and it could be someone who's an advanced athlete Mm -hmm. and someone who's a beginner and we're all working out together doing the same thing same workout I Mm -hmm. should say and all getting along and cheering each other on so it's really cool Mm -hmm. that's one of I would say one of my favorite things about CrossFit is the I guess like the the way that the community mixes together because I mean I'm not gonna lie there's been some CrossFit gyms that I've gone to where the you know the fire breathers or the people that are really good they hang out by themselves they don't really talk to everybody but I would say like our gym and where we go I some of my best friends are some of the athletes that you want to you know aren't doing RX workouts they're always scaling and that like I, I literally don't care mm-hmm. right I want them there I want anybody that's there I want you to be there I want you to feel like a part of the community and so like that's what I think is one of the coolest things about CrossFit is that you you just you come in and people are excited and they expect you to be there so when you don't show up you're like hey what's up mm-hmm. well, what's going on mm-hmm. when you're going to a regular gym that doesn't happen like I I go to a you know a regular bodybuilding gym and I do my bodybuilding workouts and I'm there to be alone so like I, I, I like that but like if that's all you have it's just different. Like you, you go there and you're almost like stressed out because there's the big jack dudes that are doing this and there's other people over here doing that. And that's why like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm afraid to go to the gym because I don't want to get judged. And like at gyms like that, I, I, I do get that. I understand that a lot more. At a CrossFit gym, it's, that's not going to happen. Like I could never imagine at a CrossFit gym, someone doing the thing where they're on their phone recording someone doing something stupid, right? And then like posting it on the social media. It just wouldn't happen. People wouldn't have it. Yeah. And so that's why I think CrossFit is so can be so valuable for people that are nervous about going to the gym or nervous about starting because they have that like th- there's people there that are excited to see you. It's not it, and there's like written workouts that you don't have to worry about it. So I think that's for me one of the like best parts about CrossFit, especially for beginners. Well, it's also accountability too. That was like the main thing when I started CrossFit. I would be like, okay, I'm gonna come like three times a week. And so it, I'd be like, oh, well, I told people I'm coming tomorrow, so I, I have to be there. And then I'd feel so much better after I worked out. Mm-hmm. So Even similar today, like Susie was like, oh, like it's your guys' workout. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. So even though, you know, the RX was chest to bar pull ups, and but the RX plus was 30 pound pound, 35 pound dumbbell. She's like, if you guys want to do bar muscle ups, like go for it. Like it's your yeah. workout. Do what you want to do. So whether you're scaling it down or scaling it up and just it's your workout. Mm-hmm. So have fun with it. And we, you and I had so much fun today doing that. It was that. so much fun because mm-hmm. yeah. So RX plus was ring muscle ups and me and Teresa both did bar muscle ups and we did really good. Mm-hmm. It was so, so much fun. fun. It was just us four in the class. So we called that it couples therapy. That was so therapy. fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, today was, so I'll just explain like what the workout was. Uh, so the workout started, it was, it was on a 25 minute clock and it started with uh, thousand you, meter row, thousand meter row, max effort, right? So you're supposed to do a thousand meter row, max effort. And then you, after you were done with the row, like it was, like I said, it was supposed to be max, max effort. So you were supposed to rest for a little bit after the row. And then you went straight into the remaining time you did 40 double unders, 20 dumbbell snatches. And then it was either chest to bar pull-ups, ring muscle-ups, or they ended up doing bar muscle-ups. Bar muscle-ups. But for me and John, we ended up doing 40 double unders, 20 snatches, dumbbell snatches of 50 pounds, and then five ring muscle-ups. And they did the same thing, but just with bar, bar muscle-ups. Bar muscle-ups, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
it was a fun workout it was a lot mm-hmm. of fun and it was fun i haven't worked out with john actually in a while mm-hmm. so we were able to i i pretty much knew that i wasn't gonna be able to like keep up with him because ring muscle ups he's always been a lot better at me but better at them than i am uh but i was able i was able, i stuck a little bit closer than i thought i would so well it's funny nice. because john and i didn't want to do the workout yeah <laughs> we were like let's just do our own thing yeah and mm-hmm. i told him i was like nah i was excited to do the workout when i saw it i was like Ooh, that looks fun mm-hmm. yeah it looked fun i just mm-hmm. you know, i'm more i am i am inclined towards laziness <laughs> and then i have to like i have to like build myself up to want to work out there are other people like well, no i want to hear my more brother about I want to hear more about explain that because I think that's interesting because I think that a lot of people that see people that do CrossFit assume they're like probably like me. <laughs> like, no, that's, what, that's what I was going to say. So you like will be at the house and you'll be like, I'm bored. I'm going to go to the gym. Yep. That is not a thought I ever have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's not. And like uh, when it comes to like the choice between like a healthy food or unhealthy, like if I'm just given the choice, it's like, okay, unhealthy. That tastes better. 100%. So, like, my natural inclination is never towards the right or healthy decision. Mm -hmm. It is always the other thing. And every healthy decision I make is, like, it feels like I'm going opposite of what my natural tendency is. Um, But I do know, and it's like like one of those things, like, what do you want versus what do you really want? Like at the moment, you I what want. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. Easy. What? Do you <laughs> like want? at the at the moment, like I will always want Chipotle, Taco Bell. Like oh, here we together go at oh, we once. Know. <laughs> we well, I I had to talk about Taco Bell in the podcast at least once. Um, <laughs> but like by Taco Bell. But yeah, dude. That'd be awesome. No, it wouldn't. Talk about hit us up. No, I would not allow that. You told Work me for Change you would podcast not eat. Brought to you by the Chalupa. <laughs> <laughs> and then if that ever happened, I hope everyone would never listen to us again. Or they would realize, wow, if you do just hold fast to your dreams, no, they no. come true. Nope. Um, anyway, so my natural inclination... My natural inclination is towards laziness and so and unhealth. And so every decision that I make is like anytime I decide, okay, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do that. It's like it's it's a fight against what I naturally want to do. I don't believe that. It Where is. do you I think habits come into that? Because I feel like my natural tendency too, especially for food, like if I could eat donuts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, yeah. I probably would. Yeah. But I think because over the years, I've literally built a habit of eating healthy and like prepping my meals, that that's like majority of the time the way I go. So yeah, exactly. But it goes back to what I was saying, like want versus really want. Mm. I want this bad food. A and chili I burger? would rather... No, that was bad decision. <laughs> oh that yeah chi- that chili burger we that all made it to the workout today or yesterday though for fourth of july yeah, yeah we did all make yeah. it ver- no chili burger. Last, last time last time on murph day i had a chili burger the day no, before but okay well i want to get back into it <laughs> you want, said hold on i don't really want i'm not done with my thought yet let me get there um oh, gosh, and no, I was immediate wants <laughs> versus long-term wants yes kind of what we're thinking of. Yeah, yeah want really want and so um i do know that when i don't work out enough i start my I get I I have a tendency to be sad. That is my like that is like my default. I just I am sad for some reason. I'm just yeah. down. It's not sad. It's like melancholy. Yeah. Um. But I do know that when I work out, when I feel like I'm not weighed down from my stomach, <laughs> you know, like when I feel light <laughs> and like energetic and that I feel good. Mm-hmm. And it's like so. Long term, I want to feel good. I want to be happy. Um, if the steps that are to get there are to work out and to eat healthy, then I'll do that. But it's not like my like, I just do it because I like it. Mm-hmm. Would it's, you say it's a domino effect though? Like you worked out this morning, so now you want to eat he- something healthy after? Yeah, for sure. It for sure is a dom- domino effect. And even even though like I know all the rules about, um, you know, if you eat healthier in the morning, it makes you want to make decisions later. If you take the stairs versus the elevator, you know, it's like those little tiny things. I know all those rules. Um, and that when you mess up and you fall off the train, just make the next right best decision. Don't like, I know all those rules, but still when you wake up and you're like, maybe you wait two hours longer than you should have to eat. So then you eat something that you shouldn't have eaten. And now you feel like kind of crap and you don't want to work out for another four hours. By the time that comes, you just feel like you don't have enough time. Like I, you still fall into that cycle. Mm-hmm. And so being able to like, get like, okay, we woke up, we worked out. That's what we did today. Um, it does kind of, it helps it helps. It makes that next decision easier. The well, the point that I was trying to make is because you guys usually wake up. You guys usually wake up super early and you work out super early. Mm-hmm. And today we didn't work out until nine a.m. So the thing I was saying is that I think that for you the natural choice isn't always like I want to be lazy because I think you you're you're excited to work out in the mornings. 
right? Like, no. He likes to get it done. Every single morning. I like to get it done. I like to have it done. It is not I wake up like, oh, right, this workout's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's I like, I am not ready to work out until halfway through the warm up. Like I am mentally not there. I'm just like this is like, like it's like that meme <laughs> where it's like that little like kid and he's like got an angry face and it's like oh, three yeah, angry yeah, faces yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like gotta do some crap strength you know <laughs> session. Gotta do some crap cardio. Gotta do some crap stretching. Like literally like that's me every time. I'm like all right, let me get through these squats. You know, and I do it and then I'm like okay, I'm glad I did that. All right, let me get through this workout. Today's workout, I'm like I'm not gonna try really. I even said it out loud. I'm not gonna go all out on the row. And then I got a pretty good row time for the mm-hmm. thousand meter. You um, say that okay. multiple times a week, though. I'm not going to really try. And then you, like, get a PR yeah. on, like, squats or something. My natural inclination is not, like, I don't like hurting. <laughs> like, yeah. that is not where I naturally like to go. But once I start moving, then it's like, well, I'm not going to half this. You know, mm. like, I'm going to, if I'm doing this, I might as well put everything I have into it. Um, but that decision to get there is not my first decision. Interesting. Yeah, I think for me. Hit the like button if you agree. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment. Send me a DM. Let me know I'm not the only one out there. Validate me. Because I am surrounded by people who love fitness. <laughs> you love fitness. I do love it. I do. Love it. I'm being a little facetious. Yeah, but exactly. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm like... I'm being... I'm being... More the, truthful than I am facetious. I understand mm-hmm. that, but it, it the way that it sounds is like you're like I, I every time I step foot in the gym I'm like I, I hate, hate it. This. Like, I don't I'm believe that. I, I'm too. sorry, I just don't believe it. Yeah. I don't believe you. I I don't believe you. I think you. I'm thinking about it in terms of sometimes I'm trying to get. I don't like to work out in the yeah, afternoons either. So I feel like I love working out. Like I thoroughly enjoy working out. But the fact of just like getting it done in the morning so that mm-hmm. you have it done before your mind has like the thought to even like talk yourself out of it. Mm-hmm. It's because like you you don't even have the chance to think in the morning. So you're just yeah. like you just go and you do it and then it's over with. But like we were saying, the habit is huge. Yeah. Because my morning has a routine mm-hmm. and it is. 4.30 alarm. <laughs> Don't get out of bed till 4.45. But I think that's, to- I think that's totally fine. Um, a lot of people are like, I think people are like, some people are like, you don't snooze. It's like, no, no, no. I know I'm going to get out of bed at 4.45. I think it's so don't like snooze for the people that are snoozing until 6 a.m. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? That's me. Yeah. So f- alarm at 4.30, get out of bed at 4.45. I'm reading my Bible, doing my devotions, whatever, until about 5.45, 6. Then you I go call to the me gym, at 5.30. Five, call you at 5.30 to make sure you're awake. Um, go to the gym, work out at 6.30. I'm pretty much ready by 8 to do work. Like, that's like my morning routine. And because that is a routine, I don't have to feel excited to go to the gym because this is what I do in yeah, the morning. It's just what and you, you always do. feel better after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Thursdays is a question mark. I allow myself, what does my body feel like if I'm going to work out or I'm going to take a rest day? I have not worked out on Thursday <laughs> in a very long time. Except because, for yesterday. Yeah. Except for, except for the holiday. But because it is not as implanted in my brain to do it mm-hmm. like Monday through Wednesday, Friday and Saturday are. It's crazy because ever since I started like working out continuously, I have been wake up, go to work, come home. I mean, go straight to the gym. And I worked out every single day in the afternoon. And now we work out in the mornings and I don't know how I worked out in the afternoon before. One of the main reasons I work out in the morning though is I think it helps my blood sugar. So that's like a personal thing. But I love getting it out of the way and just makes me feel so energized for the day. Mm -hmm. Like I got there and I was tired, but now I feel like I can conquer the world every day. And I work out on Thursdays. I agree with that. <laughs> like the my morning workouts are almost always easier to get to. Like mm-hmm. I, you just don't have time to think about it. Yeah. And like, cause for me, my morning routine is very similar to yours. It's just I don't wake up till six a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not up that early. Um, but then like you know when I was doing the marathon training or I'm you know I'm doing more of the bodybuilding stuff again. I would say that like a lot of the times it's harder for me. To, it's almost always harder for me to get a run in or do the bodybuilding stuff because I've had time. And a lot of times, maybe I made a stupid decision for lunch, and I'm eating something that I can still feel in my stomach. Like I, mm-hmm. I hate working out and feeling food in my stomach. It is one of that's why I like working out in the morning so much because I'm, I don't eat until after, right? So I don't even have to worry. It's another decision I don't have to worry about. And so, yeah, for me, it's it's very very similar. I would I would agree with that. I, I eat think- a banana before I work out. Mm-hmm. I like that feeling of. Oh. Nope, not me. It depends on the morning and if I eat something, I kind of listen to my body. Yeah. Yesterday morning, I ate something before the workout. Where today, I just didn't need it. Mm-hmm. But I feel yeah. like that when you have your work all day so by the time you know 4 or 30 hits your brain's like fried from your work so you're kind of just like exhausted but yeah. i feel like when you flip it and you work out first yeah you feel so much better to like go get your work done mm-hmm. yeah i also cared a lot more about how i looked at my pm workouts 
Like, what do you mean? When I worked out in the afternoon, like I'm like, oh, I want to have like six shoes, six shorts. Like I want to look good, you know. <laughs> in the morning, I just like literally. It's like just, you roll out of bed and you're like, it's fine. Yeah, like literally <laughs> in the morning, six shoes and it, six shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but like in the morning, I'm just like, it's literally like stuff that I maybe wouldn't wear, but I'm just like, I don't care. It's the John morning. doesn't do his laundry for three weeks. He <laughs> yeah. in the morning. He yeah. doesn't care if he smells. No, yeah. Um, but I don't know. That's just a weird decision. I'm but you always see those meme where it's like PM cross PM. Yeah. Yeah. AM. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. hairs everywhere. And yeah. The PM, I have like nice hair. Um, yeah. I have a question. So do you think you would be saying like the same thing? Say you weren't able to work out for a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'd still be like... Yeah, I don't really care about going to the gym. Or do you think you'd be like, I really want to get back to my routine? That's what I that's where I think my mind was going when I was like, I don't believe that you don't enjoy it. I think like every day, yeah, because you've been doing it, but if you had to had to take a week off or you had to take two weeks off, something happened, I th I think you would be excited to get back to the gym. I th yeah, one hundred percent. But I would, yes. But I'm also the person who will take a week off and everyone's like, What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, I just don't feel like going. And then it's like when I get to that point, I will just like, I will literally just be like, oh, I'm going to take a week off. Whereas other people are like, what? No, you have to do that every day. It's like, eh, I'm just not really feeling it. And I'll take a week off, and then I come back, and I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. I love it. When did you take a week off? I don't think I've ever seen you take a week I off. Took, yeah, he has. Yeah, really? I've taken a week off. It's n Rarely is it a week, but it's been a week before. Um, but, like, sometimes it'll be like... It's I'll gotten short in spans. Like, at like four days, I just won't work out. You know what I mean? Like, it's it happens pretty... Like, well, so what's going, through your head that? what's going through your head of that? Because I think that's interesting. And I think that that's totally fine. Yeah, There's I nothing think, wrong with that. I think that it just gets to the point where my body's tired. And I don't feel like... Well, recently... I don't feel like beating it up every day, you know? And well, so, and you were taking a couple days off with, with the move, right? Yeah. Like, you weren't... See, like, that's literally, the, like, when we moved? Yeah. So, we mo I, I moved, and I worked out Friday morning, I think? Friday. Yeah. And then I moved Saturday and Sunday all day. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, I moved little things. It was like, that was literally took up my entire weekend. And Sunday, and it, you were like, how important is it if we work out in the morning? And I'm like, I'm going. Yeah. And so then I was just like, I'm not going to do it. And, and I took Monday off. And then Tuesday, I was just ready to go back. Mm -hmm. And I went back and I felt great. And I think yeah. that's important. And yeah. I think that's totally normal. That's why I wanted you to bring it up because... I that's still something like I don't I don't ever want people to think listening to this that I'm perfect because I still struggle like if I'm not able to work out it, I get stressed out I and I don't I, I still struggle with like I don't know I don't know if it's unhealthy or if it's just because it's genuinely something I really enjoy and I don't want to not be able to do it but when I'm not able to do it I get so stressed out so like you going through that like think about me that's so one of the I think it was Monday um, or whatever yeah Monday I moved and I moved all day long I was busy from 5 a.m. until 11 p.m. And for me, though, I like felt like I ha not only I had to work out, but it's just something I enjoy so much and I wanted to do that I ended up woke up really early. I went to an early class, got my workout done there, and then I went home, packed up my whole bed, everything, my whole room, right? Had a friend come. We put it all in, the tr in his truck, took it to the where we're at now. I set all that up, right? And then I was doing that until like 4 o'clock. And then at 4 o'clock... Part of it's because I, when I get bored, I just I can't, I have really bad ADD. So if I'm just sitting around, we didn't have any Wi-Fi here. There was nothing, nothing to do. I guess I could have read a book, but yeah, that's. <laughs> I I like to read in the mornings. Like if, I don't know, it's part of one of my habits. Like during the middle of the day, I'm like I don't want to read. This isn't reading time. Uh, but so I was like bored. So then I just it was like okay, I'll I guess I'll go to the gym. So then I went and did a, like one of my bodybuilding workouts, and then. I was like, okay, now I need to edit a video. So I was up until, and I had to go to the office because, again, we didn't have Wi-Fi. But for me, I went, I did the exact opposite of you. It was like, I'm going to run myself into the ground. I don't yeah. know why. It's just yeah. part of my like, personality. 100% would not have done that. But I've been there. Um, there was one, I wouldn't have done that either. <laughs> <laughs> I am an idiot. I know this. <laughs> um, there was a point where I was uh, really into The Rock. Um, still love The Rock, but I was like obsessively into him. And he regularly would be like, all right, spent, you know, Dude, 30, yeah, he wakes up at 3 a.m. Yeah, but be like, I spent 30 hours on set. Now I'm going to go hit my gym time in. And I was just like, oh, that's real dedication. And so there was a point one day I was like, I worked out early in the morning. And then I was working two jobs. So I worked both jobs. The Starbucks one was like a setup overnight. Like it was like setting up for Christmas or something. So I worked overnight at Starbucks, got off work like 24 hours later. And was like, well, time to hit the gym mm -hmm. because that was like, this is, this is what dedication looks like. And it was the worst workout oh, I'm sure. in the entire world. I did it with Caleb 
and because um, he was like go- leaving on a plane that morning, so he was like, "Oh, I'll get my workout in with you." And so it was like super, like it was probably like four a.m. We do this workout, and it was it was crap. Like it was literally it was just junk. And I remember thinking like, "What, what did I gain? Like yeah. what did I gain in that workout? Nothing." And so, um, but yeah, for sure there was a point where I was like, "No, I have to." But it's like that thing. Like I, I always come back to that. Like if you brush your teeth every day mm-hmm. and you miss it once, you don't get cavities yeah. or plaque or whatever. And you're not going to quit. You might, you might like, you might suck at brushing your teeth. So you might have cavities, but it's not a perfect <laughs> example, but you know what I mean? Like your teeth aren't falling out cause you missed one day of brushing your teeth. Exactly. And so it's like, it's the consistency of it. Um, I yesterday just posted on my story, um, which will be gone now, but it was a picture of me five years ago on July 4th and then today or last yesterday on July 4th. And I looked at that and I was like, I looked at the picture and I was legitimately like, I went to Sam. I'm like, do I look the same? Like I, there was just this fear. Like I was like, I recognize that body. That's mm-hmm. my body like five years ago. And that was when I was like not caring. I wasn't working out. I was I was like 40 pounds overweight. That's when Taco Bell was every day so yeah. instead of Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so then I showed the picture to Sam. She's like, I was like, do I look the same? Like, there was a legitimate fear there. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no. And I'm like, can you just take a picture of me? <laughs> and she's like, take a picture of me. And I'm like, I looked. I'm like, okay, that's definitely, there's definitely a difference there. And it's not a perfect diet over those five years. It's not hitting the gym every day over those five years. But it's more often than not doing it. Um, and through that, tra- through that time, there has been significant transformation. And so I stress less about the diet. Day by day perfection and more about the more often than not, am I hitting this? And I feel totally happy there. Yeah. I I think definitely it's like the 80, 20 rule. Mm -hmm. Cause even that's something as far as like diet goes, like there's sometimes people at the gym where I work that will give me crap because like, like I post pictures of eating donuts. I post pictures of eating like funnel cakes and they're like, should you be promoting that? And I'm like, I promote 80 20 because I believe yeah. in eating things in moderation and having a lifestyle that's maintainable and enjoyable. So I think it falls into the same thing. Like it's about what you do majority of the time, not being like perfect. Yeah. Because it's like you ate a donut after the workout yesterday and it was a killer workout. So I was like, I deserve this. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you're eating donuts every single day after you work mm-hmm. out, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But then it's also, yeah, what I do the rest of the day Mm -hmm. and like the rest of like the week. Because there is this thing like we talked about before. People overestimate the amount of calories they burn in a workout. So it wasn't necessarily that I say like I deserve this donut, but just because I knew how hard I'd worked out and that 90% of the time I eat healthy, that it's like this one donut in the matter of course of a week and the course of this day isn't going to matter. Yeah. So I'm interested though in your brain. Okay. Because it looks like it's... Pick my brain, bro. It looks like it is... Uh, about to smoke out <laughs> or Is whatever it? like yeah why because i can just tell you're th- you're thinking a lot it's it's moving so do you think we're talking about moderation and moderation is definitely important mm-hmm. you are prone to extremes <laughs> yeah so you were you don't accidentally get severely morbidly obese <laughs> kind of you do but yeah, you're making decisions. You're, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, it's not you. You accidentally get there when you're in that mindset. But once you step back, you realize, mm-hmm. okay, I didn't accidentally get there. But yeah, I know, I know what you mean. So I'm is your definitely. fear that if you're not as disciplined, like I know you're not afraid of ever being becoming obese again? Mm-hmm. Just ask your question, bro. You don't have to. You don't have to tread lightly. No, no, no. <laughs> that's that's my question. Like, is your fear that you are going to lose it all? Maybe not get obese again, but lose it all. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think that it's. It's a fear. It's just like I genuinely like get enjoyment. So like what I was trying to say, like when you guys were talking about that stuff is one of my favorite sayings is don't let um, perfect get in the way of good enough. And I think that when it comes to like general fitness, especially with weight loss, a lot of people think they have to be perfect from the get go. And that's the that is one, the worst mindset I think to have when you're trying to lose weight because people go from typical American diet, which is what I was eating, you know, eating, uh, drinking soda all the time, eating whatever they want, going out to eat all the time. Like I literally would go out to eat more than I would eat at home just because I didn't know how to cook. All that's right. So if I tried to go from that and and I'm very lucky because the way that my shift happened this time with losing the weight it was just natural like i couldn't afford a gym membership so i didn't go to the gym right away Mm -hmm. um you know and when it comes to morbid obesity 
most of your weight loss is happening in the kitchen. I would say all of your weight loss is happening in the kitchen, especially at the very beginning. So I just made small changes. And so a lot of people think they need to do 100% all the way. And uh, so that was just kind of, I just wanted to bring that up with the point you guys were talking about. But like what with what you're talking about, I mean, I would be lying if I said there's no aspect of that, I think. But there's there's definitely, there's absolutely no thought in my head that I'm going to ever go back to where I was. Like, it's not even a thought. I think for me, I'm just so, like you said, I'm, I'm prone to extremes. So for me, I just really enjoy going from morbidly obese to being as at, like fit as I can. And part of it really is that I just... I genuinely enjoy going to the gym. Like there's, there's no getting around that. It's not, I'm, I'm completely, that's why when you were saying that, I just genuinely, I can I, I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, like at least like, I don't believe that I could ever feel that way. Yeah. Cause it's hard for me because I enjoy going to the gym and it's one of the things I look forward to the most out of my days. And so it's like the reason I went to the gym when, like after I had moved all day was cause I was, I was bored and in my head I'm like, well, I know like after I work out, I'll feel pretty good. And so like, why not just do that? (laughs) Like, you know, so I don't, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I think there, I'd be lying if I said there was no fear at all, but it's not like that I'm going to be obese. It's just that a fear that I'm not going to be proud of myself. You know, I think that's probably the, that's probably the biggest thing is like, I really think like if I were to go to sleep and I knew I could have done this or that and I didn't like, I hate that feeling. And so I think that's kind of part of it. Mm Mm-hmm. And then a big part of it's just honestly getting bored, like being mm. bored. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I mean, yeah. You're around me all the time. Sometimes I wonder what your relationship or your attachment is to like working out twice a day. Mm-hmm. And if it is like because you genuinely enjoy it or if it's because you feel like you have to. Mm-hmm. But like you say, you just, you get bored and you enjoy it. So you like want to go. Do you believe me? Yeah, I think so. I think I just laugh because you get bored so easily. <laughs> I literally am just true. like, oh we'll my like, word. We'll be like having a conversation <laughs> and it'll be like, yeah, yeah, that was a good talk. Five seconds of past week. Well, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> he has ADD. There was okay. a, this week, wasn't it this week? What we were, this past week, we were somewhere and I was like, we're trying to spend time together and I was like, oh my word, your ADD is so oh, yeah, bad, bad today. We, we yeah. to I was like, yeah, I feel like you can't pay attention to well, me whatsoever. She, she had, I was facing, so we were at this pizza place, so it's like build your own pizza. It's like similar to Chipotle. It's called Blaze, right? And they build their own pizza. But there was this lady, there was this girl that was working there. She was working the oven. So it's like this big oven that they put the pizzas in there for like three minutes and they take it out real fast. So it's like a lot of moving parts. And so I have really bad ADD, like we've said a million times. So it like, ugh, it's hard. It's hard for me, right? But she was so mean. Like she was being rude, so rude to every customer. So it was fascinating to me that this girl was working behind the counter and just so rude. I couldn't believe it. But then I noticed there was one guy who's a pretty good looking dude. He went up and then she was really nice to him. She <laughs> laughed and she smiled. And so I was thinking either it's just because this dude is good looking or maybe they know each other. So like there, that was going through my head and I'm sitting next to her because we were sitting on the same side of the table because we do that. But, and I, I like, she was bringing, she brought it to me and I felt bad because like 100% was paying attention. It's just, I, I get overloaded. But yeah, that was the story. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> so two things. It was just fun. I love people watching. They're the couple that sit on the same table as each other. Yeah, we we we. Sit you guys make fun of us. Yeah. We're, we sit on the other side and we go. Only weird people sit on the same side. <laughs> when the table's so huge, and you're just like, hey. <laughs> but the second thing is, so Jean and John, you guys are very different in many ways. But you do that too. You won't pay attention <laughs> to me and you'll look at the people being mean or like people watch and I'm like, I'm trying to have a deep conversation with you. <laughs> the same. It's like, I'm trying, I haven't seen you all week. I'm trying to spend time with you. Like, please give me attention. Or if we go to like a restaurant where the TV's on, John will just stare I'm at the gone. TV. You are bad. <laughs> I'm you gone. Are so bad. He yeah. doesn't oh even like gosh. sports and the football game will be on and he'll just start like spitting out all this sports well, or language i would have never done that john you haven't played football ever <laughs> yeah, he's like ever. oh he dropped it oh yeah and i'm like wow what <laughs> listen <idiot>. to me <laughs> um one time i uh we were at chipotle and surprise Shocking. yeah and um the it was so busy it was so busy and we were um in a seat table that could fit six people it was so busy <laughs> And it was right next to the line. And the line was looping back. And every single person who was, like, 
three or four, like a group of three or four, were staring at us <laughs> like, how could they you? I want to be able to eat there. Yeah, I wanna, I they were one hundred percent. They were staring at us. They were looking at us. They were judging us for taking up a table for six. And so we're talking, and just this crazy amount of anxiety starts filling. No, me. No, I'm talking, and you're staring at them, getting anxiety. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like making eye contact with them, like, "You want to try to take my table? You want to take my table?" <laughs> That's. Funny. And it just got to the point where I was just like, I, "Sam was in the middle of a sentence," and I'm like, "I'm sorry, we need to move." <laughs> so you moved like, like what? I literally. We, I'm like, we need to move. Everyone's staring at us. It's so busy. We're taking up an entire table. I was like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, we need to move. And so we moved in the very back In this corner. tiny little table. Tiny little in the table. But by the no, bathroom. One, no one would want that table. And so I didn't need to worry about it mm. whatsoever. It was just beauty. Yep. I would have done the same thing. Without a doubt. But I it's get- like, I read the room. Like, that's like, I like, I... Uh, I can feel the feelings in a room. So mm-hmm. when the tension is high, like if there's someone who's upset or angry or if they're like something like, and there's a lot of like, I read that and it literally just washes over me and I'm like, Oh, I feel this. I feel this. Mm-hmm. I, I, Oh my gosh. Either, either I need to solve it or I need to get out. Like there is no, like, let me just sit in this tension. Like it's yeah. no, mm-hmm. like I have to either. Yeah. Fix it or get out. And a lot of times my fix it, fix it is aggressive. Yeah, oh, or it's like that's you, true. Like, do you think you could talk to that person like that? You know, like, like it's not like a hey, like maybe like change your attitude. Even then, I, that's still that's but, still aggressive, but, John. But it's like, why do you th- like why do you think you can talk to that person that way? Like, why do you think that that you know like stuff like that it gets really aggressive? Yeah. And so it's like the better option is just like let me uh, let me get out of this situation, please. Yeah, it's really lovely to go eating with me, huh? Yeah, eating or driving. Oh, driving's not worse. I'm getting better. You, you, I have never, so we, growing up, we watched a lot of TV, you know, say what you want about that. It's probably not the best, but Jean has always completely just zoned out, like mouth will be half open. <laughs> yes. Just like staring <laughs> Still at the TV. Still to this day. So we, me, Jean, and Sam went out to eat uh, on Sunday. I don't watch TV. I didn't even. I, I don't watch TV and for John this David reason. cheated on me. What? Yes, he did. Oh, yeah, hey, you don't say it. Jeez. <laughs> People don't know what you mean by that. By cheating That's true, because the podcast John, doesn't know our rule right now. David casually Jeez. cheated on Shriz. <laughs> we yeah. were And John and appalled. Sam knew. Yeah. So we made a rule. We weren't, we weren't going to go out to eat as much, and I went out to eat without Shriz, so that's what she means. We only have a two out to eat per week. Yeah, but this week we had different rules because of the move, and I didn't have any food, okay? That's what I. That's how I'm rationalizing it. But So me, John, and <laughs> Sam were out to eat. And so there John was, didn't even want to go because of his rule. I didn't really want to go because... <laughs> I don't know why. And he was like, no, we need to eat together as a family. It was 100% Jean influenced me to go out to eat. <laughs> and 100%. you were giving him, were you giving him a hard time about his rule and his extremism yeah, exactly. with his he rules? He was giving me a hard time. <laughs> yes, and I was. So, so I was like, okay, you know what? <laughs> I, I am well, hungry. I was just, we would go out to eat every Sunday after church. That's what we do as a little family. And it's adorable. And <laughs> you create this rule and all of a sudden now we can't go out to le- eat after church yeah. anymore. And so I was, no, fr- I was we frustrated. we did uh, have an exception to the rule which was when we go out to eat with friends though like yeah. if friends want to go out to eat we could add a day yeah, yeah and i was mad because it impeached on <laughs> our family time yeah, so, okay <laughs> so john's mad and he's he is the one that's like we're gonna go out to eat and me and sam are like sure let's do it and then we get there and of course john sits at the table that's, or at the seat that is facing this that he huge can look screen of the office which one he well, doesn't even watch. He doesn't watch. And two, there's no audio. You can't hear anything. You can't even hear it. And there's no subtitles either. So it's just... There were subtitles. Was there? Were you trying yeah. to read their lips? No, there were subtitles. Okay, there that's, were subtitles. that's fair. But, so, but even then, me and Sam were sitting there. Jean maybe said five words all the time. Yeah. Because he just looked at the office and didn't talk to us at all. Or and he and would Sam, laugh... At the office, and not at my and wonderful then jokes. He would be like, oh, "I need to stop. I need to stop watching." <laughs> Two seconds later, he's watching it again. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder what that is. I'm the same way. Yeah, the TV sucks me in, yeah. and people can like be saying my name, and unless they like yeah. tap me, I'm like, "Oh." I don't. I don't know if we've told this story on the I'm podcast not like before, that. But, unless it's something um, that's really boring. Yeah, I mean, why are you looking like at me Buster like Scruggs? 
<laughs> um, but that was just weird. Yeah, there was a time that Sam just moved into an apartment down the str- uh, by the beach, and sh- we were like, you know what? Like, uh, oh my, uh, my idea. I'm like, you should invite your friends over. Let's have a little dinner, like a welcoming. Oh my gosh! I and remember then, this. and then, so Sam's like, okay, that'd be so cute. And so she's making dinner in the kitchen, and she's like, Jean, just entertain. It was just our one friend who came over. She's like, just entertain them while we're um, while I'm making. Blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. And so I put on <laughs> Parks and Rec, which is a show I do love and do watch. And the entire time, I didn't talk to her friend. We they ate were dinner. We, I made spaghetti. I made vegetti. <laughs> Veggie spaghetti. <laughs> Zucchini oh noodles. My. Yes, yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're and, sitting there, uh, and we're having a lovely conversation. And they're Jean, talking mouth open, about stare. me. <laughs> talking like... Saying light. my name... And everything, and I'm just watching it, and I'll eventually I hear like, Sean, 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 and I'm like, what? Like we were calling your name, like we were talking, literally about sitting you right next to him on the couch this entire time, and I was like, oh. Well, so he then, was talking about how he doesn't pay attention. To yes. You and so, um, needless to say, Sam was very mad at me. No, I was mad, and then she left, and, and I was like, this is pretty early in the relationship. This is well. pretty early yeah. in the relationship, and. <laughs> She leaves, and then I'm like, I'm gonna go clean the kitchen. He's still watching Parks and Rec, <laughs> and I no clean the whole like, okay, entire I'll stay kitchen. Here. <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, have you gotten better on that? I don't watch TV. Have yeah. you made, did you make a role or something? Or no, I just don't. I don't like that I get into that place, and I don't know why it is. Um, but like, that explains a couple days ago when the TV was on, and I immediately got up, turned on music, and started cleaning the kitchen because like I don't want to get into that place of like. I'm just going to zone out and watch the screen. Yeah, it's, it, well, I think that's good to notice a bad habit, right? Because, I mean, there's good habits, there's bad habits. To notice that that's happening and make a change. Because uh, you definitely still watch TV every once in a while. Like, we're watching Stranger Things, right? But it's like... A social. It's, like it's a social. Yeah, yeah. And you've yeah. decided we're going to watch the show, which it's really good this season. Uh, the third season is pretty good so far. Um, like, I'm going to watch the show, blah, 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 instead of, I'm sitting here, oh, I'm going to turn on the TV, and then, oh, it's three hours have gone by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely, I still struggle with that at times. Not with TV. I almost, I almost only turn on Netflix at, at night. Mm -hmm. And for me, I get sucked in, but at the same time, like I don't, I get sucked into my phone more. So I'll be, I'll have something on and I'll be on my phone and I realize I have no idea what I was just watching or Mm -hmm. what just happened. So I'll like rewind it. Um, but yeah, so like there's, there's definitely times where it's, it's good to notice those things and maybe like make changes. Like for me, I try not to like put on netflix during the day i'll try and do something else and like i think i guess for me instead of sitting and watching netflix or sitting and watching youtube i'll okay i'll go to the gym like that's my (laughs) we know yeah (laughs) i guess that's part of why i go i guess Mm -hmm. it's just general like boredom and i'd like okay how can i spend my time in a more productive way well even if you are someone who's prone to like just getting sucked in tv you have to be honest with yourself with, with everything else in your life like no, this is what I do. I have to be honest with myself. And you change those little habits because you have to recognize them first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even having people who are kind of like your mirror, like, you know, like we would tell anybody, yeah. any of us like, hey, you've been doing this lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so once you recognize it, it's easy to kind of flip it. So what I do want to let everyone know who's listening to this podcast is um, you don't have to want to work out and have the perfect habits to make a change <laughs> because on my own. I just zone out on the TV and don't like to work out. But I do recognize what do I really want? What are the long-term mm-hmm. goals? And it's like, I want to live a long, happy, healthy life. I want to be in good shape. And, and so I, I said, things... you have to continue to work out for the rest of your life because we're getting married. Yeah, we're not allowed to, we're not allowed to do the, we got <laughs> married, now we're fat and happy. Now we can yeah. let ourselves go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that part of that too is, what's important is to like you were saying think about the long term but i think the reason i make a lot of the decisions i make aren't about how i'm going to feel during the thing right during the working out during the whatever it's how am i going to feel afterwards so a lot of people will ask me how do you eat so healthy or uh, how do you not eat pizza anymore and because like i was as typical as you can get even more so of i ate junk food all the time terrible food for me all the time it's all i ate so to have that switch one it was over time it's not like it was snap everything was gone but now 
I, I think one of the biggest things I think about is how am I going to feel afterwards? So like you guys make fun of me because I don't eat much dairy. I've been slowly introducing it a little bit, but the reason I don't do it, it's not because I want to be annoying and like make it so it's hard for us to go out to eat. Right. It's because I know if I ate too much, I'm going to feel terrible and I don't like feeling that way. So it's like, no matter how much I know I would enjoy that pizza or I know I'd enjoy that thing with a bunch of like that cheeseburger with real cheese on it. I know that afterwards i'm gonna feel terrible so it's just it makes it easier for me to make the right decision whatever you want it if that's the right or wrong whatever it's up to you but to make the decision that i make because i know afterwards i don't want to feel that way and i think that that's one of the things i don't i don't know what like how it clicked for me but it's it's like how i make most of my decisions i think about what what are the repercussions of this or repercussions well the more you make the same mistake over and over again you're most likely to change. Hopefully. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Or, Hopefully. Thing is, yeah. Or you, this is similar. You become so used to it that it, yeah. it's yeah. not a mistake mm-hmm. anymore. In your yeah. Head. It's yeah. just the, the choice you make. I think it was similar to the conversation we were having recently where I was asking you about this concept of most people do things to either seek pleasure or mm-hmm. avoid pain. And so these ideas of like choosing to eat healthy is because of long term pleasure, but we have short term pain in the moment where we're like, oh, I really want this pizza, but. I'm going to have salad instead because I know in the long run I'll feel like healthier and happier. One thing I have never said. <laughs> That's true. That sentence has not once ever you come out You bought lettuce mouth. and stuff for a salad today, today. And that was really shocking. Because there was, I did not give myself the alternative. Yeah. It wasn't like, I could get a pizza or a salad. It was like, no, I'm going to get salad. Mm-hmm. There is no option. Yeah. There is no choice. <laughs> I'm, getting salad. I'm buying my groceries, so yeah. Yeah. we yeah. don't it's buy pizza from the grocery the store. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, that's the way I that. like to think about things is I think there might be a, I don't know if there's a switch that like flips in like your brain and like the connections in your like brain. Once you get to that point that you decide to think of things in terms of what it's going to do in the long term versus most people are kind of thinking about things in terms of like immediate gratification and like instant gratification. I think that's kind of like talking about that or uh, one of the big topics right now that's really popular in like fitness is like diet culture, right? And a lot of people have issues with diets and stuff like that. And I, I, with, I have an issue with most diets as well, like especially like crash diets. And I think that that kind of goes into that is everything that you decide when you're on one of these crash diets, whether it's like, I don't want to call keto a crash diet, but they have a lot of rules and restrictions is you're, you're making choices, not because it's what you want. It's because what the diet says, Mm -hmm. right? When it becomes, instead of this is what these rules have dictated, what my choice needs to be, uh, or this is what I know I will I, I'll, I'll receive benefit from this choice and that's where that's where I come from now it's like I'm gonna receive benefit by you know this is gonna be at the start of the journey it was like this is gonna be lower calorie this is gonna help me reach my goals mm-hmm. that I set for myself not that Atkins put out there that I'm mm-hmm. supposed to follow or that ex coach gave to me or whatever it was it was like no I'm making this decision because these are decisions I wanted to make mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm articulating that yeah, as good so, as I could. Yeah, uh, so you're thinking of things. So these diets, these fad diets, these crash diets are these external cues that you're focusing on, whereas you're coming from a place of their internal cues yeah. that you're focusing on. So it's like your food voice versus like food, like rules that are going on like outside of you. Mm-hmm. And that I think, yeah, it isn't beneficial because we don't teach people to like listen to like it's such a vague term, but like listen to their own bodies, but you have to make the choices for yourself and find out what's best for you rather than these things that like tell you what to do. Yeah. I 100% agree. And that's one of the reasons I, one of the reasons I really dislike like most diets. And again, I'm putting that in quotes because a diet is just what you're eating. Right. But most like crash diets and stuff is that we end up following them for a certain amount of time, but then they get stuck in our minds that this is how I should have, should eat always. So then when you want to get off of that, say you're doing like keto or something like that, right? Or whatever it might be, the second you want to maybe change things up, you still are making decisions based on that that diet you were on. So then you're maybe not making the best decision. Like I've noticed that a lot of people that uh, did keto for a while and lost a, a little bit of weight with that is that when they're like, okay, I'm not doing keto anymore. I want to lose weight. They're still like picking these foods that are really high in fat. Mm-hmm that when they're not even trying to get a lot of fat in, you know, they're still eating carbs. So like if you're trying to lose weight, but you're choosing these, say you're like you're getting trail mix cause you're like, yeah. okay, this is high in fat or like you're putting butter in your coffee or whatever it might be. Right. Like that's good for you. Um, you end up, you're putting the butter in your coffee, but you're still eating the carbs. So now you're, you're gaining weight or whatever it might be. Yeah. So it's because you're, you've, 
ingrained these rules in your head that you're no longer following but it's hard it's hard to get it's hard to shake them so that's like one of my biggest issues with like diets and stuff like that is they put these rules on that i don't think they, they need to be there everyone when it comes to like losing weight when it comes to diets or whatever like it's so individualized for the person you have to find out what works for you and, and it for takes s- practice absolutely mm-hmm. oh, yeah experimentation absolutely for sure so i think though like i think that for the most part i think diets they're coming from a good place for the most part yeah for the most part some are not like the the big ones like the atkins the weight watchers the like it's coming from a good place to legitimately help people lose weight um i think that i mean some some people like instagram weight loss plans are to earn that influence or money um a lot of the times but like but the principles are still there if there were more programs that offered like ramp off plans, so like okay, this is an eight week thing, and then week uh, nine through twelve is gonna be like you're done with this plan, but like here's how you get off it. You know what I mean? Like, I think there would probably be more success because they people would learn like oh here's a healthy way to get off this, mm-hmm. especially like within like the bikini comp- competitor world, they have this like really. Sh- strict strict diet mm-hmm. for so long and it's like show good job have it's fun like, yeah, yeah you know like yeah good luck and it's like um um okay well um what i did then is i would eat rice cakes and peanut butter um so i should probably eat that but i also that's exact are you just talking about me yeah i'm just <laughs> no, no, no but like it's like there's this fear of like well that has a lot of calories so i'm not allowed to eat that because i wasn't eating that when i was on prep but then you're like you know it's just it you start associating things in the wrong way. Yeah. There's a negative association with things that doesn't need to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're just kind of like, Oh, mm-hmm. what do I do? And I, that's, I'm picking on bikini or bodybuilding or show like, but like with every diet, like if you don't know how to ramp off it, well, then it is going to cause those negative habits. And I think that if we, if there were more options out there, we're like, here's eight weeks of how you do this. Here's four weeks, how to get off it. And here's how we recommend. I wouldn't even, I don't think get off is the right word. Um, I, don't, I, don't I would know. say I'm just, I'm li- this I is processing yeah. right here. Yeah, no, I understand. Mm-hmm. I would say it's more. This is how you turn this into a sustainable habit. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, because get off it may- makes it sound like I'm going to do keto now. I'm going to get off of it because mm-hmm. I'm done. You yeah. know, or I, think I need to get back on something because I fell off like the wagon. I yeah. don't think you should be getting on and off. Yeah. That language Diets, is wrong. I know, but, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, but I I agree with what you're mm-hmm. saying. I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I think that. It's a lot of people, diets aren't, they're not, like Sharissa was saying, it's, it doesn't become an internal thing. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. Mm-hmm. It has to be choices you are making because internally it's the choice you want to make. Yeah. Like for you, I know you joke around about how like you want to eat pizza all the time and stuff like, but if you were to I eat I don't pizza, actually want to eat pizza know, all the time, I know. but I do want exactly. it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but say if you ate pizza I'm the same with cookies. three yeah. times yeah. a day. Three yeah. times a day, you would get to a point where you're like, I'm I sick feel of this. terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you would make a decision to eat a salad mm-hmm. because you're like, this is what I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not because I need to do this because I need to lose weight because mm-hmm. this is what yeah. like other people are telling me to do. Mm-hmm. But that, that is where diet culture is wrong. And I do like, there's things that I like with di- the people that have issues with diet culture. I agree for the most part with what they're saying but it's always there's there's this huge thing where it's like this extreme where it's like if you're trying to lose weight that's diet culture telling you it's like well no maybe you're morbidly obese and you need to do that you know it's important for your health or maybe you just want to lose a couple yeah of exactly yeah, yeah 100 but your i body, always mm-hmm. if you want to lose some weight lose some weight yeah it's your choice to do that yeah. but it's like now it's with diet culture it's like well that's just because diet culture is telling you to do that and you shouldn't it's like well maybe you shouldn't maybe there's some people that really you're at a healthy weight right now and you don't need to lose weight mm-hmm. but there are some people that yeah they're like you know 20 pounds mm-hmm. overweight and you want to lose some weight there's yeah. nothing wrong with that either it's how you go about it mm-hmm. yeah and with the people that have issues with diet culture a lot of people go about it in the wrong way it's like how can i lose this as fast as possible mm-hmm. what's the best plan to get this weight off and the truth is the best plan is different for mm-hmm. everybody yeah. and they put a time frame on it so like these ideas exactly. that's mm-hmm. like oh like i need to do this 12 week thing where if we actually go back to what you were saying or how you were comparing how you looked from five years ago to now like mm-hmm. it's not like you've done anything extreme but in those five years because of these little things that have added up over time that have been very consistent your body has changed so that's yeah. something that 
John David and I talk about a lot is like this idea of like body recomp that takes like a year to two years Mm -hmm. is the most sustainable thing where you teach people these little things like one at a time versus like having to be like okay like starting Monday you know I go and get all my clean food and I cut out everything like it's not something you need to do (laughs) you love to start on Mondays I love to start everything on Mondays (laughs) like I'm like oh I I, I gotta do book well I gotta start it on Monday (laughs) But I I agree with like what you're saying. That was what I would do when I would try and lose weight. It was like, okay, I'm gonna start this this day, and I would try and do everything at once, and it mm-hmm. it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. You need to slowly build into mm-hmm. it, and then the habits become part of the the habits become part of you, and the the reason the habits are internal. You know, it's not I'm doing this because I'm trying to be this person or that person. It's like I'm doing this because this is honestly the best decision in my head that I feel like I should make Mm. that's when it becomes a habit that sticks you know not a habit that you do for a little bit and then you fall off like reading for me which Um, is stressful and frustrating just to say July 1st was on a Monday and it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me (laughs) 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 because it just happened to be like the first fell on a Monday it seems like I love when this happens halfway through the year what did you start on July 1st oh yeah that's right it was six months mid year yeah I love that too yeah um I didn't really start anything. I've just been doing me lately. But we, I mean, <laughs> we've been uh, doing me lately. <laughs> but like I said, it's been the whole like from the. I don't know. Was I talking about this in the podcast? Or were we talking about it in real life? Um, the this like is real life. it's hard to tell anymore. I know what is real life. <laughs> real life versus fake life. Yeah, <laughs> the Matrix. The, yeah, no, no, no. Like, what am I actually portraying to people versus what am I actually? You know, yeah. you mean that thing. Being no. authentic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, um. What I don't remember what I was saying in real life, but. The moment I moved in, I stopped eating out as much. Yeah, explain. Like, tell, tell I think he said that. that in real life. Okay, like, <laughs> yeah. Because, um, like, last week. I think it was while we were eating breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Last week, I had Chipotle five times. I'm not kidding. It was five okay, times. Okay, but the, you, I the week before that, it was probably a similar. Like, amount three of times. times. Yeah. And I'm going to Starbucks four times a week, right? Like, these are things I don't... I didn't want to do, but, like, I've been renting rooms for years. You didn't want to do in the long term yeah and in the moment you did no no No, he would it would be like i'm hungry i didn't have a i don't feel comfortable going into a kitchen and cooking breakfast i need to go get breakfast so he has a bacon good yeah exactly he loves us i don't want to but he's kind of getting sick of him i am it got to the point where it's just like uh, because i just they the families were always like yeah feel free to use our kitchen they're our friends but it's like but it's just like it's, it's not your not space. Your kitchen. Yeah. It's not your place. It's, that's and I was dealing with the same thing. Like, yeah. I mean, my roommates, I love them to death, and if they're listening, I love you guys. I'm not trying to talk bad, but it, it's hard when you're living like we were in almost in the same situation, right? We're living with a couple, mm-hmm. right? And you even there was even kids involved with you, but yeah. like I'm living with a couple, so it's no matter what, it's two against one, right? Like. If I'm cooking and they need to cook, there's two people that want to cook and only one person's cooking, which yeah. is me. So I did my best to get out of the way as much as possible. And when you're doing that, you're not doing what's best. You're doing what is the least like in the way. Yeah, it's like, exactly. One hundred percent know how you're feeling. And so I've and it's been a long time since I've had a place that was like mine. Like I've been bouncing around for a long yeah. time. How many years? How many years now? A very long time. I don't know, <laughs> but a very long time. Um, and even when we were uh, technically, I was living at my mom's house. Um, yeah. it, it was everyone else's house. Like there was like seven people there, right? Yeah. yeah. And then like, especially like with faith being there and yeah. all, all, like everything that was going on, like it was like, I'm out, I'm not here. You just slept there. I don't want to be here. Yeah. Um, so it's been a very long time, but anyway, like I was eating out, I was eating out, I was eating out. It was just like, it was, this is what was necessary. This is what was happening. Um, but then literally my first week, it's been a week, a week since I've been here. And it's like, I haven't gone to Chipotle once. I've gone to Starbucks maybe once. No, no, I don't think I have because like I've we got have coffee here. We've yeah. got coffee here. Mm-hmm. I've got my breakfast here. I've got my food here. I can meal prep here. We're going out here. tonight cause we're going with friends. Well, yeah. We're going out, to sushi out with some friends. Like it's like, it was like the moment I was able to be like, okay, good. This is fine. Like. It was a change, which I think is so interesting. I don't remember why I brought that up. Would you, would you call that an excuse that you were making before? I would say it was a good reason. I one th- makes say it me was an like beg the question: like, are we possibly like inherently lazy, like 
and that we actually have to like kind of set up our environment to be more like efficient and effective for us. So like you didn't give yourself the option to buy pizza at Target today. You're like, I'm buying salad. Mm -hmm. So like for you, like the easier option yeah, it was be- to go out because you didn't have to inconvenience like somebody else by being like in their kitchen. Yeah. But it does make me wonder, like, are we inherently lazy? So we do kind of have to set things up to make them like work for us. But it just requires a little bit more prep in the beginning. Or, yeah. yeah or are we more like, are we energy conscious? Like, ah, yeah. like conscious. Mm-hmm. Like we know that do it, setting up to start meal prepping takes a lot of energy you Mm -hmm. know so it's like it'd be so much easier to just do something else so Mm -hmm. it's like in order to save energy i'm going to just go get this right now yeah exactly and so it's like once you meal prep you realize that's just a little bit but then it's so convenient for the rest of the week and so it's like more energy conscience to prep Mm -hmm. you know and so maybe less like lazy kind of comes at it from the negative connotation Mm -hmm. i think it's more we like we know that we only have so much energy and so much time in a day. If we can make a decision that's going to save some energy and time, like, heck yeah, let's mm-hmm. do that. I don't know. Yeah, it's like looking at the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, in the small little picture, right now it's a little inconvenient, but in the bigger picture, it's way more convenient because mm-hmm. the rest of the week, I can just grab and go. Yep. Yeah. The, the reason I asked was because... What'd you ask? I said, is that... Um, an excuse. An excuse, oh, right? right? Because I don't really like... The, the phrasing a lot of people use of like, you just need to grind it. You just need to work hard because there are people that have legitimate reasons why, why like losing weight or going to the gym might be more difficult. Like for you, a lot of people do live with their family still and it is very hard to cook on your own. Yeah. It is very hard. Like there are things that make it harder for people. So that's why I just wanted to ask because I, I've always said that I agree that some people have it worse than others. That's without a doubt. But it, at the end of the day, like say that that was going to be our situation for three more years and you had n- nothing, no way out of it. I wonder if you would have been like, I need, I need to set up some stuff to where I'm able to cook because like three years of that would not, I don't think that would have been good. No. But then also he didn't have any of his stuff at that kitchen. I feel like then you'd have to be like, Oh, I have to get stuff. Mm-hmm. Get, but yeah, again, to get make, my stuff. But yeah. again, say it was, you had, you knew you were going to be there for three more years. Would you have eventually been like, I need to get stuff and I need to be like, yo, yeah, probably. I need it. Yeah. Because like I definitely like through all throughout all this, I've definitely realized like I've put on a couple extra pounds more than I'm more than I like. Like I don't care about being shredded at all, but like I've definitely put on more weight than I normally sit at. Mm-hmm. And I think that it would have started getting to the point where I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, something's gotta exactly. get. That's why yeah, I was like, yeah. gotta get. Yeah. But like knowing that it was like this is just six months mm-hmm. or whatever, and then I can get back to my routine. Six months being a little fluffier than I normally am isn't the worst thing in the world. You know, I'll just kind of get got super strong. I got strong. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like now that I'm back into like, or I guess I'm creating a routine now, um, but back into where I wanted to be in routine, it's like, all right, mm-hmm. cool. Like I'm, I just, mm-hmm. it wasn't like, I can understand, like, I think in an unhealthier mindset, you can, you could get really to dip- like. Victim. And there were times I would get really sad and depressed in that time because mm-hmm. it, I wasn't controlling my schedule. I definitely and noticed I it too. There'd hate, be a couple days. Yeah. I hate that. Um, but I can ima- but I never put like, I wouldn't put a lot of excess pressure on myself that I needed to have it all together. Cause I knew that in the season I was at, it was just kind you of, you knew it was temporary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew it was temporary and I knew there would be turmoil. And so it was just like, let me give myself way more grace than I normally would. Um, and I think a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people don't give themselves grace. Mm-hmm. And so then they go through a six month hard patch and they are just beating themselves up and they're beating themselves to the ground. And it's like life is already doing that. Like you don't need to do it to yourself. Give yourself grace. Like be your best friend, be your greatest cheerleader in that time because you know that eventually that season's going to end. Um, and when it does, like you'll be much more proud of your mindset than if you just beat yourself up for that time. Even like in your case you had a time frame like we are getting married so we need a home you know yeah yeah, exactly so it's like ours was your temp it's this is temporary it has a time frame set on it and if someone is in a like a spot like that but they don't have an end date that's hard even just your end date is you changing your mindset yeah even like if you want to start on a monday like (laughs) hey i'm giving myself until monday to be down in the dumps give yourself that time and 
make the steps to change. Yeah, because I was like thinking that even if somebody was in this situation where they might be in this one spot for like three more years, like, Mm -hmm. yes, it might be hard, but there are some things you can do. So like, what could you do to make it even just like a little bit better? And like, what could you do to improve? Yeah, and changing your perspective. Even if it takes a little bit more work, it'll make up in the long mm-hmm. I mean yeah and it's it's about what you focus on right focus on what you can control versus mm-hmm. what you can't control it's one of my like stoicism is one of my favorite philosophies right and one of the major tenets of that is focus on what you can control not what you can control but in that current situation you were in right you couldn't control where you were living there was nothing you could do at yeah. that moment right yeah so then focus on okay I can do this I can do that and that and then with anybody that's in a bad situation or something that they know could be better don't focus on the negative that you have right now. Focus on what can I do to make this better? Mm-hmm. What what can I actually do to make it a more positive experience? That's, and, I think, one of the most helpful things for any sort of mindset or any sort of transformation you might want to make, whether that's financial or, you know, going to the gym, losing some weight, whatever it might be. Focus on what you can change and control versus what you're set. Not, not, versus, not versus of, like, what you can't control. So... And I think a more disciplined person than me would have <laughs> been able to make it work. But, like, I'm not that more disciplined person. Yeah, we already so know like, you're inherently lazy. You yeah, exactly. But He's like, energy conscious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Energy, energy conscious. Conscience. Um, but, like, a, a more disciplined person, sure, they could have made that work. But, like, that's not where I am. Well, we and did little things. Like, we would supplement a meal prep company so we did a meal prep service yeah. because i knew that That's i wouldn't I was be able to yeah thinking because we were talking the other day about something like somebody was saying something about like frozen food and i was like you can even buy like relatively decent like frozen meals that have like good macros mm-hmm. so like even then if that's your only option is like microwavable food yeah. like there are options that, mm-hmm. that aren't frozen, that bad frozen yeah. veggies yeah. some uncle ben's oh yeah, yeah. heck yeah i think that Again, it's it's that thing I said earlier. Don't let perfect get in the way of good enough. Yeah. Like I think the situation you were like you said, if you were a more disciplined person, you probably could have made something work. Yeah. But it I think you were just in a mindset where you're like, I you knew that how soon the that was gonna end, so you just kinda let yourself deal with that at the yeah. time and then get out of it. And again, like you said, right when you got into place you made some different decisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you you've been eating your own food. You haven't yeah. been, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> eating Chipotle twelve times a year. Yay. Or twelve times a week. Twelve times um, a year. <laughs> twelve times a year wouldn't be bad. That's what you should That'd be start. terrible. No, no, no. Once a month? I, once a week <laughs> is like I'm content with once a week. Like that like even if I live in a place, it's like once a week, that's fine. Yeah. 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 I, There's like maybe maybe once every two weeks. Oh yeah, or something. Maybe I would once. love that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. John's gonna go star- starve himself to death. <laughs> 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 but yeah that's kind of what i think i think sometimes too like this perception of like nothing's ever going to be perfect so like for example sometimes i have to remind myself of this like i was in a living situation where i was renting a room from a family and there's lots of people and animals in the house and i guess i'm one of those more disciplined people so like i would do my meal prep but it was definitely challenging for me at times like but how much was like going on and you know would possibly complain about like the living situation i was in but then you know i get this new living situation and i don't have a car p- park like and i have to park my car a half a mile away oh, and walk it, a half a mile really to my mile. apartment so I, it's one of those things where there's never going to be a perfect apartment there's mm-hmm. never going to be a perfect job like whatever job you go to there's going to be something that you would possibly like have to kind of like handle there's never going to be a perfect relationship so it's kind of about know like looking on the bright side of things and just understanding that nothing is ever going to be perfect so just like do what you can i can promise you you will always be able to find a negative in a situation Mm -hmm. but at the same time i promise you you can can always always find find a positive positive. in the situation Mm -hmm. it's all it's literally all up to you it's 100 Mm -hmm. all up to you without a doubt and so that's that's what that's what i feel so what do you think about that so guys what are your final thoughts before we head out well how was our girl takeover <laughs> yeah, no, right? yeah was it that, that bad girl takeover. <laughs> i mean it, i mean i think we talked more today than we did last time oh yeah i, yeah. I think that's so fair. yeah that's, that's fair. fair i mean it's, it's hard with me because i talk you talk a lot yeah we know we i i <laughs> depend on it yeah because i you like to process things i process and i try to say things in as few of words as possible <laughs> and then i say words in too many words and make myself sound well thought out words yeah, yeah i try but then a lot of times what happens is it'll be a sentence. It'll be one sentence that'll be like, so yeah, what I'm thinking is, 
And just like, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, like, I'm just looking at him like, are you going to uh, keep talking? This is a podcast. So you're going to yeah. continue and I'm like, talking. And I was like, do I want to put the adverb before? Like, like literally, mm-hmm. I'm like, how do I process this? And it just comes out slow. But it's like, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. And then a lot of times I'll say something. And I'm like, that's not what I wanted to say at all. <laughs> that was not it. No, but this has been fun, like, talking about this. Again, we we had th- certain things that we wanted to talk about. We did not talk about them because this We talked about the competition, though. Yeah. yeah for, I will so we talked about that for, like, literally... Two seconds. I will say... Three minutes. Shris and I both got a PR at our competition. We did! We did say that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, Sam and I both got 135 pounds for our clean and jerk. Yes. Yeah. Did nice. you have fun at the competition? It was so much yeah. fun. Good. Yeah, me Full too. Circle. Yep. Yeah, we started the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. went off talking about your competitions and stuff. Oh, yeah. right oh. Back. Ooh, <laughs> burn. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I thought it was fun too because we didn't practice. At all. We did not. So yeah. we, and we did don't really work amazing. out together no. either. So. I think Part we of the competition, team. Sam and I had never like really like done partner stuff together. Yeah. We didn't practice any of the movements together, so we did good. Yeah. Especially with that slug. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Insert it was cool to like below. have the guys there supporting <laughs> us being our cheerleaders versus I think it's usually the other way around. Like I was there supporting you for your marathon. So it was yeah. your time to. No, it was fun. Yeah. I had to do. I was a lot less stressed. Well, kind of. Charissa stresses all about stuff like this. So she was unbelievable. You guys should have seen her before her first open workout. It was <laughs> rough. She would not talk to me. <laughs> at all i'm very much an internalizer I internalize everything and so like if i'm nervous i'm stressed like i get very quiet and i'm just like all up in my and head then i am somebody that always assumes i did something wrong <laughs> so then i'm like i just need something. the reinsurance so i'll be like am i okay am i okay jean am i okay I'm like you got this and i'm like okay and literally yeah, in I the do. middle of a workout <laughs> she's saying sorry to jean and he's like what are you sorry for <laughs> that was so funny yeah. i'm yeah. sorry for what <laughs> just continue. if you could see my face though in that competition the pain <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no you did, you guys did really good yeah. i'm yeah. very very proud of you guys it was so like fun. the effort again fun. it's effort over outcome and the effort was there and the outcome mm-hmm. you didn't get last place yeah, right? yeah. so nope. there you go yeah, it's all yeah. that matters. Not and we had place. fun. And that's yeah. what it was matters. a fun yeah. day. Yeah, we got just hang out outside yeah. in the yeah. sun. They had a little sunburn. Too. They had like yeah. the. It was it was a cool competition. I, I mm-hmm. it's one that I think me and John are gonna do next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, if you guys um, enjoy this podcast, let us know. Um, you can let us know on. Instagram is what it's called. <laughs> I was going to say let us know on iTunes. You could do that by leaving a review, a five-star review. Um, <laughs> it's the only way. John. The only way. Um, but also on Instagram, you can find us on Instagram. Just tag us. You know, Let us know that you're listening, that you're watching. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Just say that you enjoyed the podcast. That's super cool. That's the best way for us to know that you guys are still involved, you're still engaged. Let um, us know you like girl takeovers. Yeah. yeah, let us know if you guys like let girl takeovers. Let us know how Sam and I did today because I also like reassurance too. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I like girl takeovers because <laughs> I... great. I, yeah, I think you guys oh, are great. Oh, thank you. And I we like, appreciate I like that. I like girl takeovers because it means that I have to talk half as much, which is pretty enjoyable. Um, we get to split up. We get to share the wealth of talking. Yeah. Um, but until next time, that was episode 36. My name is John. My name is John. My name is Sharissa. And my name is Sam. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.